Hi, this is Rodney Brown, the editor-in-chief at Nerd Caliber, and you may know me on Facebook as First Person Shooter. And I am here with John Radoff, the CEO of Disruptor Beam, creator of the game of the game Game of Thrones Ascent, and a brand new game that just got announced. John, why don't you tell us about the new game? Sure. So just earlier this week, we announced that we're developing Star Trek Timelines. It's going to be a game about blending together all of the different eras and all the favorite characters from Star Trek lore. So we're going to go all the way back to the original series, the next generation, everything through Enterprise, a bunch of the movies. So that's because the galaxy is currently in a state of crisis because timelines are breaking down, timelines are merging, alternate universes are intersecting. So you'll be able to assemble a crew from all your characters across those different series, and you'll even be able to tap into some of the alternate universes. So if you want to have like Terran Empire Spock on your ship, like evil Spock, you'll be able to do that. Excellent. Got to have evil Spock because, you know, the beard is where it's at. Does the game actually start fitting into the standard lore timeline somewhere and then break apart? How does that work? Um, from a story perspective, I don't want to reveal too much, but it's going to be, it'll, you'll kind of start out in that next gen era and then things will sort of branch out from there. So it, is it like after the Cardassian War, after the Dominion War? Or, okay. You'll have, you'll have to stay tuned for exactly what we're doing with the story. Over the next few months, we're going to start to reveal more and more in terms of both gameplay systems, what we're doing with certain elements of the story. Okay. Let's jump back to Game of Thrones Ascent. Um, that game just took off like a rocket. Uh, tell us how's it, how is it going and how does that gameplay sort of inform what you're going to be doing with Star Trek? Yep, yeah, it's done great. Um, we just shipped it on iPad only a couple of weeks ago. It's a top grossing game on the iPad RPG store. Um, so it's done well. We have over 100,000 people a day playing the game. So people like it, they're sticking with it, and it's available on web as well. In a few weeks, we'll ship on Android. So we want to make it so you can play that game everywhere, and it's doing well. So with Star Trek Timelines, we're going to release it on that full set of devices. So one thing we've learned is we really just want to make it so that if you're a fan, you can play it wherever you want, whenever you want, whatever device you want. So that'll mean Android, um, iDevices, and web will all be options right out of the gate with Star Trek Timelines. So other things we've learned, you know, story is really important to us. So Game of Thrones Ascent is a product that's really driven by the story and the moral ambiguities of Westeros and it's about diplomacy. You know, it's not always just about fighting. It's about the interactions between characters as well. So that's a big part of what we're going to bring to life in Star Trek also because Gene Roddenberry's vision for Star Trek wasn't that it was a game, it's not a universe about like everybody's constantly fighting. It's also about diplomacy, about character development, and first and foremost, exploration. So this is a game that's going to be about exploring space, exploring the galaxy, exploring time, exploring alternate universes, and resolving conflicts through a range of mechanisms, in some case battle, but more often than not, science and diplomatic decisions that you make. Now one of the key things about Game of Thrones Ascent is, is sort of the development of your resources, of your keep, you know, of, of your town. How do you reflect that in, in Star Trek, um, where your ship is, I would assume, going off into the farthest corners of the galaxy? Yep. So in Star Trek, there's still technology, though, and you're always doing shipboard development of new technologies and new science and researching things. So we're going to have that aspect to it. So there will be tech trees and research and development trees. That will be a big part of the game. Crafting is a big part of Game of Thrones Ascent. So we may not call it crafting in Star Trek, but we'll have similar things where you're always trying to figure out engineering and science-based solutions to better equipping your crew and improving your starship, but also improving your crew uh, as well. So you might start out with one character and increasingly specialize them for doing certain types of things and equip them. That character-centered action is going to be an important part of Star Trek in the same way that your sworn swords, which are essentially your henchmen in the world of Game of Thrones, your crew will fill a similar role in Star Trek timelines. Now, um, from, a, from a licensing standpoint, it sounds like, with the name Timelines, you've pretty much got all the Star Trek universes that were you know, on TV. Um, is there anything that you don't have? You have Voyager characters, are people going to expect to find Janeway? Um, uh, or is it pretty much all open? It's everything that's ever appeared on TV. So, um, absolutely Voyager, Deep Space Nine, Enterprise, even the animated series, we can drop on lore and content there. 
Are you going to have Kazinti? <laughs> We're gonna or we have Kazinti. We're gonna have everything. I don't want to give away exactly what we're gonna do with content yet, but we'll be revealing more of it. For anybody who doesn't remember this, in the animated series, Larry Niven wrote a couple of episodes, so some of the stuff from his known space series, including the Kazin, are in that Star Trek series. I'm dying, you've gotta have Kazinti. But so the good news is we've got hundreds of episodes of content, hundreds of books. I'm not sure exactly how many books exist. So, so you have the books as well? Well, everything that's been set in Star Trek, I can't say. I mean, there's always exception cases. Right. So you don't get absolutely everything. I don't know if we'll have access to Larry Niven's work, for example, because it wouldn't surprise me if it's carved out in some special way. But in general, we have all your favorite episodes, all your state favorite characters across all the series, and we'll be bringing that into the gameplay. So with the crafting aspect of it, I can eventually actually create a, a warp speed transporter, just like Scotty in the new movies? Well, you'll, you'll have to play the game to find that out. But we're going to have advanced technology for sure. So speaking of playing the game, tell us all about you know, release schedules, beta testing schedules, things like that. So we don't have a release date yet, but we are building the community and the people who participate in the community, who join our Facebook page, who join our forums on our website. These, we think of fans as like really collaborators with us in making the best possible game. We're fans ourselves. Um, we think we're making a great game that's for the fans, for the true Star Trek fan who really believes in, Star in Gene Roddenberry's vision for the universe, which is largely optimistic and based on the idea that you can resolve conflicts through ways other than direct violence a lot of the time. So that's what we're doing, but we want to really make sure fans are part of that process and giving us feedback on gameplay systems. So over the next few months, we'll be doing reveals on gameplay systems, some of the story stuff that you're asking about that you okay. eagerly want to know. Uh, we're not going to answer every question because you're going to have to play the game too, but we're going to talk about all of that stuff. And so if you want to participate in a beta, that's really the way you do it because that's going to be the community that gets first access to the game. Okay, and give us all of the uh, websites, Facebook, social media, and so on where people can find out the information and sign up for things. Yep, so the Facebook fan page is uh, Star Trek Timelines. So you just go to facebook.com slash Star Trek Timelines. And our own website is disruptorbeam.com. You can go there, and it's very easy to find once you're on our website. All right. Excellent. Very cool. Thank you very much, John. Uh, oh, uh, just one. 2014 for some sort of gameplay, maybe? Even testing? Uh, we'll see. And on that definite note, <laughs> this has been Rodney Brown for Nerd Caliber signing off. Curious. We are not where we are supposed to be. Captain, the most incredible thing is happening. Let's see what's out there.